The first time we were racing into space, it was about national pride. The eagle has wings. This time, it's about money. The International Space Station is a near zero gravity laboratory dedicated to scientific research. The end of NASA's shuttle program left the world with only one way to get there Russia. We're supposed to pay over $70 million per seat to the Russians just to go to the space station. It's just kind of embarrassing that the United States has to thumb rise from the Russians. There is a better way. A new shuttle will soon take flight, but NASA won't be making it. Private companies will. And liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon. We're building this in anticipation of a market emerging. NASA is hosting a competition for private enterprise to build a spacecraft to shuttle humans back and forth to low Earth orbit. And that contract will be worth billions. I think commercial space today is much like commercial aviation was back in the late 20s and 30s. It's being enabled by the government, but eventually it's going to take off. There's competition, and competition is good. Contenders in this heated race, Boeing, SpaceX, and Sierra Nevada. And the stakes are high. One release. All multi-billion dollar aerospace companies, each determined to win the NASA contract in order to become the leader in the emerging space industry. SpaceX is the youngest contender. Born in 2002 from PayPal billionaire Elon Musk, his company set out with a lofty mission to colonize Mars. Do you ever question if you're crazy? Yes. I think it's important to question your sanity because at the point which you stop questioning your sanity, you're probably insane. SpaceX's Dragon is a capsule design meant to hold both crew and cargo and can stay in orbit for up to two years. How much cheaper is it going to be to send an astronaut to the International Space Station using Dragon? Dragon can take up to seven people and if NASA uses the full complement of crew and orders four per year, we can do it for $20 million a person. It's a lot cheaper than $72 million a person. Yeah. The SpaceX Dragon capsule is launched into space by the company's own rocket called Falcon 9. Dragon is the first commercial spacecraft in history to deliver cargo to the International Space Station and safely return to Earth, a mission previously achieved by only three nations. And this is the first uh, Dragon spacecraft. You can see the, the heat shield and the scorch marks. So this, this came in like a flaming meteor. And how did it feel when, when that came back in one piece? It felt great. It was like, wow, I can't believe it worked. We're kind of like a Silicon Valley technology company that's doing space. What qualifies you to put human beings in outer space? Every launch of the Falcon 9 rockets, which is the rocket that would carry astronauts, has succeeded. So it's got a 100% success rate, which is, I mean, the best success rate of any rocket ever. Boeing is known for airplanes, but they actually have a long history in space. Since NASA's beginning, Boeing has been a contractor on every manned space program, including building the parts for the International Space Station. Boeing has been in human spaceflight from day one, and so it's just part of our core. We see this as just the next huge opportunity for Boeing and for NASA. How big do you expect the market to be? The development price itself is, is such a huge barrier. Just a very different business model than Boeing's used to. Our huge development programs are typically centered around uh, commercial airplanes, military aircraft, uh, where there is a lot of orders. And right now the foundation of the business is two flights a year. Boeing's CST-100 is also a capsule. Their weldless design makes their craft stronger and lighter than traditional models. Come on in. Okay. How many astronauts will fly in this capsule? Right now we've configured it to fly up to five, uh, but the CST-100 is designed for up to seven. We have a significant experience obviously in capsules from Mercury and, and Gemini, Apollo. The capsule was, was an easy decision. What about comfort? This isn't exactly the most comfortable position I've ever been in. No, absolutely, but you could have a very rough landing. We needed to make sure that this design would, uh, would satisfy even the roughest potential landing. And then there's aerospace insider Sierra Nevada. 
You've probably never heard of them, despite the fact that they launch something into orbit about every two to three weeks. Sierra Nevada has been around for over 50 years. One of the things people see when they come here is they see wonderful technology. They see a spaceship that's already flying in a short period of time. You guys are up against Boeing and SpaceX. What makes you think that you can take them on? How many people knew Google before they started? We think Dream Chaser is the best transportation system for what we do in space. It's almost like we're building the iPad and other people are building the apps in the future from that iPad. Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser design is the only one in the competition that is not a capsule. It's a lifting body. Your model is the only one that actually looks like the shuttle. But what's interesting about this is actually the volume inside is as much usable volume as the space shuttle had. We could put seven people, it would be uh, a comfortable fit, and they could stay in space for several days if they need to with enough supplies. It's really like a space SUV. Yes. So far, there hasn't been a capsule that's taken humans that's gone up to space. So one might have to build 20 or 30 or 40 capsules to do the same thing that we can do with one space vehicle. When you look at the economics of that, that's a really important thing. All right, let's jump in the simulator. Then. Okay. Look at the front that's, window. I see the runway see right the there. Runway? Yeah. It doesn't fly like an airplane, but it lands like an airplane. The fact that the Dream Chaser requires a landing strip, that sets it apart from the competition. For us, we can land pretty much on any runway 8,000 feet or longer in the world. Because we don't enter like a capsule, we pull a lot less Gs on entry. We come in at a very low 1.5 Gs. So you can come in, land on a runway with a sensitive payload. The scientists can get to that payload within 30 minutes because it's right there on the runway. Every spacecraft ever flown by NASA has been built by a commercial company. And increasingly, the government has transferred the financial and physical risk of the business to private enterprise. Is there something at risk with these big businesses entering into the space industry? The organization, NASA, that had done this for many, many years is not doing it. So we are sort of we're sticking our necks out a little bit. We're taking a group of people, corporations, that really hadn't been at the development level and we're sort of thrusting them there and saying, you go produce, make a safe system for me and come back and let me know when you're done. But the benefit is that we get back and forth much simpler. Conquering a new frontier requires having a destination. For NASA, that place is the International Space Station. It's the most expensive single object ever created. Projected to cost the U.S. $8 billion, in the end, ISS costs $60 billion. And that's not including operating costs or the initial cost of the shuttle program. All in, the price tag is an estimated $150 billion. ISS infrastructure is expected to last until 2028, before requiring costly maintenance. But government funding has only been committed until 2024. If a manned commercial space shuttle won't launch before 2017, commercial companies will be left with little time to make a profit. To justify the cost, these private companies are betting that there is business beyond ISS. There is a potential for a huge business opportunity. There is going to be an incredibly robust and interesting capability to get not just American astronauts back and forth to low Earth orbit, but perhaps paying commercial um, customers someday to a destination that certainly doesn't exist today. Fast forward 10 years, I wish I could look in my crystal ball and say that this is going to take off and in a matter of 15 or 20 years we're going to have a couple space stations orbiting the Earth, perhaps a hotel back and forth to which we take, you know, wealthy but paying passengers nonetheless. It's about when you build it, will they come? The original space race was driven by nationalism. Is right. the new space race driven by the bottom line of private enterprise? In my case, I have an ideological drive. The thing that, that really matters is to establish a base on, on Mars, in my view, for us to become a multi-planet species. Establishing um, an insurance policy for, for life itself. Elon Musk has sunk $100 million of his own fortune into SpaceX. Do you see then the commercial crew program as a step in that direction? 
Is that why this is important to SpaceX? It's going to be helpful towards creating a base on Mars. For Boeing, SpaceX, or Sierra Nevada, winning this contract would secure their company's survival. Whoever wins this contest, are they set to be the next major player in space exploration? Yeah, I, I really think so. This is the time. Will this design die if Boeing does not win the NASA contract? We'd have to go back and see whether you could close the business case by moving forward without the, the help from NASA on the development. What will it mean for Sierra Nevada if you lose this race, if you don't win the contract? By the time this decision is, gets made, we would have had a lot of maturity on the vehicle. So there is a strong likelihood that we will be able to take what we've learned and move it to other markets. It would slow us down uh, because we would have less money to spend in that direction. But we'd continue launching satellites um, as well as launching cargo to the space station and bringing cargo back from the space station. Every spacecraft we've ever flown has been built by a commercial company. This is just another way of procuring that spacecraft. I'm convinced that we will have a, a reliable, safe spacecraft when the time comes to sign that contract. The more we test ourselves and the more we push exploration, the smarter and the better we're going to be. It's in our DNA to explore. That's what draws us to space. We need to continue to go beyond what we currently know.